Heather and welcome back to Japan where today I was listening to Shadow Maker, the latest, I believe, song by Love Bites. It's not particularly new, I've been busy, I got around to it. Please forgive me, especially if you're a hardcore Love Bites fan thinking, what do you mean you got round to it? Anyway, this is a band who, if you've been following the channel for a while, especially before we had to restart the channel, you'll know that we listened to Love Bites pretty early on in our existence, back in 2019, I think it was. And the first songs we listened to by them, they seemed to be really sort of getting themselves together, starting out, and they seemed to be a band who had an image which was bigger than their budget. I mean, they had that one video we first listened to where they were wearing all the dresses, but they were walking around a set that basically looked like it was probably the record company's offices. I think they're a band who've always had a degree of charm for me. Now, we kind of backed off listening to them for a while while we were expanding, listening to all other new bands and growing the channel. But then came back to them not so long ago. I think it was about a year ago I listened to Glory to the World. I just love that song. That song is absolutely fantastic. I can just adore and listen to that, even the guitar solo. I've never been a big proponent of guitar solos, not that I've got anything against them, I just think they're rather overused. I love the guitar solo in that, I love the arrangement, I felt it somehow bordered between having a pop rock quality, an anthemic metal quality, and also having an orchestral quality in various elements. It just felt like something that worked. But at the same time, I was like, this is so on point, this is so great, this is so well put together. I'm going to expect this to be somewhat of a pinnacle of what they do. I'm willing to accept that they're not going to do a song going to be quite blowing me away as much as this for a little while, and there's nothing wrong with that. Bands have songs where they hit really high, and then, you know, maybe take a bit of time to find their next big thing, or their next experimentation that takes them in a new direction, or their next way of perfecting the formula that they already have. And thus, in Shadow Maker, we have a song that I must admit didn't blow me away in the way that Glory to the World did, but, you know... I do have some complimentary things to say about it nonetheless. See, there are some bands who, when they keep on doing things within their wheelhouse, within their sound that appeal to certain sonic things they do, I tend to get a little bit bored and think, well, you're just regurgitating what you've done before. But in the case of these guys, I think one of the things that's already interesting in Love Bites is even when they are just kind of doing something that's very much within their formula, they're very good at keeping the energy up. And there's a few factors that play into this. First of all, is for a band that is so heavy, they really do make sure their studio recordings have clarity. Yes, I know this is not specifically down to the band, this is also down to the studio work, but you know, everyone has to pull together, the band are going to listen to the album before they say that's good to go out, for however much say they might actually have in controlling that, but you know, I really do think that in this case, we are looking at a band who put out crisp sounding recordings. When you hear the drums, there's a lot of kick drum on, which sometimes in a lot of bands can sound muddy, it can sound too much, like they're really trying to make you impressed at how much kick there is. Here they keep the kicks bassy but precise, really punching through, and as a result you get a feeling of a real sort of tapping on the desk sort of vibe, you know, it's got that fast train moving vibe, you really feel like you're getting lots of little bullet points, and that keeps it kinetic. On top of that, the guitars, they're heavy, but you notice that they're mixed relatively high up in the EQ, they're not down, they're getting dirty. I mean, when you have those lower, those lower frequencies, as you might know if you've ever seen an oscilloscope or uh, any app, because we are in the 21st century, that shows waveforms, the lower waveforms, obviously, less waves in a certain period of time. So here's a little bit of science for anyone who didn't already know this. Obviously, that means that there's less room for clarity in the bass regions, which means you can have less sounds packed in. But in the higher regions, you can have lots of different sounds packed in together that are all audible. audible. Think about having loads of birds tweeting to each other, you can make out the sounds of all the individual ones, even if you don't necessarily understand bird language, but if you imagine lots of low bass rumbling sounds, it would be kind of hard to pull them apart, for an extreme example. If the floor was shaking, you wouldn't be able to tell exactly what the individual causes of that were. And this is my point, is that they know okay, that was an extreme example, but they know to mix the guitars, mix the sounds that you want to be clear, that are really sort of propelling the melody, the notes, the harmony, mix them a little bit higher, which seems counterintuitive when you want to be heavy, you want to have a lot of impact, but, you know, the impact in a bass end needs to be punchy. Anyway, let's move apart from that and let's move on to the song, because the song was, again, just good, just really good. Yeah, not blow your mind time, not that quite anthemic, wow, impressive thing that Glory to the World was, but I did feel that it had a good catchy melody. I really like the singer's voice. I've, uh, I, some people have said against that when we, 
we have a lot of bandmate fans on the channel. We have love uh, love bites fans on the channel. I know you said love mates, love bites fans on the channel as well. They don't always agree, which is cool. It's nice to see that difference. I love that we have so many different voices, different opinions in the community on this channel. However, I couldn't help but feel that for me, this is a very different style from bandmate. So. I just like her voice in a very different way. I like the fact that she's got that kind of orchestral quality. Yeah, it's a little bit over showy, you know, but that's nice. Sometimes you want that. It's a very different thing. And it, to me, it felt like that. It felt like a big melody as everything was churning along quickly underneath. The melody kept it smooth. It added a certain degree of pacing to everything. So you can take that sort of blasting of energy for longer when the melody adds a slower narrative over the top. So I just found that the whole song was a nice balance of different things. They were clear. When we went into a solo, the solo was pretty much what we'd expect. And now, again, this is me being me, and I already said my opinions on solos. They have to kind of do more to, it's kind of the same as choruses, actually. It takes more to impress me with something like that when pretty much every rock song has them than with various other things. The solo was good. Um, yeah, it worked. Uh, didn't feel like the song took particularly many left turns. I kind of like more when you have something like, uh, well, to use Glory of the World again as an example, where the whole song builds up through that and then launches into the crescendo of the final chorus. Here, I just felt like the, the solo was there just as something that breaks up the song on its way to the final chorus. So, yes, it worked. It didn't have any moments that particularly set it apart from any of the previous songs that I've heard. Didn't have anything that particularly made me go wow, but it was one of those songs where I went, look, it's well made, it's well performed, it's got a nice melody, it's not gonna necessarily stick in my head, but if you stick this in a playlist of fast moving songs or in a list of Love Bites songs, I will definitely be okay with that. I will definitely listen to it a few times around. It will make me think that I probably wanna listen to Glory to the World more, but you know what? If you put them both together, I'll be okay. So. <laughs> This is great. One of the other things that I should mention as well is it had that music video that really kind of suggested that they were going, well, look, it's good enough to release it as a single, but it's not our most standout one, so let's not spend too much budget. It was your typical uh, hard rock. Let's find some dark rooms, put some good lighting in there, and then film them with slightly shaky cameras so everything looks energetic, and then use a little bit of a fisheye lens so you can see a little bit of the scene and the lighting around it. It was kind of that sort of thing. Simple by the numbers. It worked though. I liked it. It was it was good. It was good, innocent fun. It rocked, and that's all that matters, really, is it not, folks? So there you go. That's my final opinion. I'm not gonna repeat it anymore. And hopefully I'll be seeing your opinions down in the comments. But until I do see you very soon in Japan for the next one of these, or in the comments, for now. Ciao ciao.